Welcome to this session for the Claremont Colleges. Um, if you are here, you are in the right place. Um, we're so thrilled for you to be joining us today. Uh, my name is Tom Campbell. I'm an assistant dean of admissions at Pomona College, one of the five wonderful undergraduate Claremont Colleges who you'll be hearing from this evening, afternoon, morning, wherever you are tuning in from. We love the global community that Claremont and the rest of the world represents. I'll wait a minute or two just knowing that um, we had some, uh, we're going to probably have some late arrivals to the session before we get officially started. Um, and we will try to consolidate things to make this session end right on time for everyone. So thank you and welcome again. All righty. So for the sake of time, um, we'll go ahead and get going. So I will repeat what I mentioned before. Um, so hello and welcome to the Claremont College's information session this evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. Um, my name is Tom Campbell, Assistant Dean of Admissions at Pomona College. We're so thrilled for, to be joining you all today and we have admissions representatives from all of my wonderful um, partner, colleague institutions throughout the Claremont Colleges here to share more with you about our very unique and special environment that we have in sunny Southern California. Um, of course, many of us are tuning in from different parts of the world. So hello from Brunswick, Maine. I know Tyr is tuning in from Boston, um, but we all definitely have a piece of SoCal in our hearts for sure. Um, so just to give you a little bit of an agenda before we get going, um, I will um, pass over the microphone to have everyone introduce themselves. All of our um, panelists who will be speaking about our, the respective Claremont institutions. Um, so we'll go in founding order. Um, Pomona's founding order, so I already introduced myself. So I'll, ta I'll toss things over to Jessica from Scripps to introduce herself to all of you. Yeah, hi everybody. I'm Jessica from Scripps. You kind of covered that too. Uh, and uh, so I'm an Associate Director of Admission. Thanks for coming tonight. Hi everyone, my name is Connor Fritz. I'm Associate Dean of Admission at Claremont McKenna College. Tira. Hi everyone, my name is Tira Briggs and I'm the Vice President for Admission and Financial Aid at Harvey Mudd College. And yes, as Tom noticed, hello from Acton, Massachusetts. Awesome, hi everyone. My name is Erin Griffin. I'm an Assistant Director of Admission at Pitzer College. So nice to be here with you all. Great, yes, and I'll speed through this agenda just to give you a sense for how the rest of our 51 minutes will operate. Um, so we will do a little bit of a welcome and an introduction to the Claremont Colleges that Tira um, from Harvey Mudd will be leading you all through. Then once Tira concludes that kind of broad um, macro level overview of the Claremont Colleges and how they work, we'll break into individual college specific overviews that um, myself and my colleagues will be leading you through. We will then open it up to a live question and answer session for all the colleges. So if you look in your Zoom here, um, you should be able to see a Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. That's how you're going to be able to engage with us panelists today throughout the session. So feel free to utilize that throughout the session to ask any questions you have. We will be spending some time at the end of the after at the end of the session to cover them um, in a group setting. And then we'll be breaking into actually college specific breakout rooms. Um, we'll be posting a link in the chat box that will provide you with a little web page for all of our individual Zoom specific college um, breakout rooms. Um, so you can engage with whichever respective Claremont colleges you'd like to on an individual level. If you also need closed captioning for this session, you will also see a live transcript button to the right of the Q&A box. Feel free to utilize that to have the session be captioned for you. Um, but with that, I'll have, um, I'll turn the mic over to Tira to be able to go through the um, overview of the Claremont Colleges. Great. Thank you, Tom. Um, so what we really want you to understand by the end of this program tonight is exactly sort of how different we are as a consortium and also, of course, how different we are, each of us amongst the five of us. So the, the most important thing to understand about the Claremont Colleges is what's previously called the Claremont Consortium is that we literally are a unique model of educate, higher education in the United States. So we are the only planned college consortium in the United States. And by that, I mean almost from the very beginning, we were designed to work together. The idea was Pomona was first founded in 1887. The idea was that a college would be added to the consortium every decade of the 1900s until there were 10. Well, we've stopped actually at seven, five undergraduate colleges and two graduate institutions. Um, but what that means is we really feel like we give you the best of both worlds. Um, everything that you're gonna hear about from every small liberal arts college that you visit, the, uh, the advantage of getting to know your faculty members well, an average class size of 15 to 20, uh, student teacher ratios of eight or nine to one, 
Um, all of those things are true at any one of the Claremont colleges. But on top of that, because we share things, um, we actually give students the resources of a small to mid-sized university. So what that means is altogether we have about 6,000 undergraduates, 2,500 courses to choose from, 560 acres of land, but we are literally in one square mile. So it's not like you get on a bus and go place to place. Instead, you literally walk across the street and you're on the campus of one of the other colleges. Um, and so that means that students can take full advantages of all the colleges have to offer every single day. So we essentially share things where it makes sense to share, things like a central library, um, medical and counseling services. We share things like our Office of Black Student Affairs, our Chicano Latino Students Association, our Queer Resource Center, our Asian Ad Board. All of those different pieces are shared, but we have our own pieces too. We have our own presidents, we have our own board of trustees, we have our own admission and financial aid offices in our own dorms. But students really have the option of taking advantage of everything all of the colleges have to offer. Um, so for example, uh, a student who has a, an ID to get into any one of the dining halls on any one of the college campuses, that's an advantage, but you can actually use that to get into the dining halls on any of the other college campuses. And so that means that students have many different dining halls to choose from. It really means that the students follow the good food around, so they take full advantage of that as well. Um, there are two full music programs among the Claremont Colleges, one housed at Scripps College, one housed at Pomona College. Students can choose whichever one they would like to connect themselves to. There are many joint majors and joint programs. You see the Keck Science Department highlighted here that is shared by Claremont McKenna, Pitzer, and Scripps. Lots of joint programs um, as options. We also share our athletics in a really interesting way. You might think that we would have one team or five teams, but instead we actually have two. The students from Claremont McKenna, Harvey Mudd, and Scripps combined to make one team called CMS. And our arch rivals are Pomona Pitzer. We actually play each other. So we're one of the only places where you could be in class with someone at four and competing against them at five, which is uh, a really interesting dynamic. We are all division three in the NCAA. So there is no, um, no athletic scholarships. The idea is very much the scholar athlete. Um, in addition to that, and probably the most important way in which we connect with each other, however, is through our academic courses. That is absolutely crucial. So that means you've got these 2,500 courses to choose from every single year. And essentially, if you want to register for a class at one of the other Claremont colleges, all you have to do is type in, say, economics, and all of the economics courses at all of the other Claremont colleges pop up. And for the most part, with some exceptions, you actually have the same chance of getting into the colleges, getting into the courses at the other colleges as you do at your home institution. There are some exceptions to that, but that's true for the most part. And so it's very rare for any of the Claremont College students to ever uh, go through four years of your, the Claremont Colleges and not take courses at the other colleges. And that's a, a key part of who we are. So I think what we're trying to stress with students from day one is that they can think of the Claremont Colleges as their home institution completely, um, so they can choose to what extent they actually want to, to um, take advantage of all the different things that are going on. One of our other big advantages is actually where we're located. We are located about 35 miles east of Los Angeles in the, the heart of Southern California. So what that means is that students can take full advantage of everything that is offered all around us. We are, this is without traffic, which right now is true, but normally is not true, but we are about 45 minutes to places like the beaches of Southern California. We are 45 minutes to places like Disneyland and Universal Studios. We are um, a 10 minute walk from Claremont into, um, a 10 minute walk from the colleges to Claremont and a 15 minute train ride into downtown LA. Um, and we are in the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains. We are an hour west of Palm Springs. So students can take advantage of all of the different things that are happening um, in Southern California. In the town of Claremont, you see it there, is its official nickname is the City of Trees. Its unofficial nickname is the City of Trees and PhDs because most of the people in Claremont are somehow connected to the Claremont Colleges. Um, but I can't stress enough what an amazing place it is to go to college. We, LA is the third largest city in the United States, an incredible sense of diversity, museums, um, restaurants, cultural activities, and students can take full advantage of that as well. And it really is absolutely wonderful. Claremont itself is a small village of about 34,000 people. Um, and again, lots of folks connected to the different colleges. But one of the advantages there is it is within walking distance of all of the colleges, lots of small shops, restaurants, the train station, um, and there's something we have called Claremont Cash, which literally is sort of like a, a debit card that is used on the campuses. It's, uh, it can be used also in a lot of the restaurants and shops in downtown Claremont as well. So having the, the advantages of Claremont 
um, is absolutely amazing. And again, in the foothills of the San Gabriel Mountains, this means that it may be 75 degrees and sunny in Claremont, but the mountains will be snow covered. So if students are interested in doing things like hiking, mountain biking, rock climbing, but even skiing and snowboarding, that will be an option as well. And students will take full advantage of all of those things. Um, so it's an absolutely wonderful uh, environment in which to go to college. Um, so I'm trying to think, have I left anything out to my fellow Claremont folks? I'm getting a thumbs up from various people. So yeah, I think that is, that is the heart of who we are. But again, best of both worlds, advantages of a small college, resources of a small to mid-sized university, and five absolutely remarkable colleges all within one place um, with students taking full advantage of all the different things that are there. So I will turn it back to Tom because once, once again, we're going to go in, uh, in founding order. All right. Thanks so much, Tira. That was a great overview and great segue into this, the individual college presentations. Um, so as you can see here from the slide, um, Pomona located the foothill of the San Gabriel's as are all the other Claremont colleges. Um, I want to spend a little time talking about kind of Pomona's role in the consortium and kind of what our thing is. We get that question a lot, especially in comparison to the other Claremont colleges that have a more distinct identity based on their history and their founding um, and the intent behind the populations they were meant to serve. Pomona is meant to be a college of the New England type in Southern California. So bridging together the tradition of a liberal arts college model, which emphasizes small classes, a residential community, interdisciplinary learning, learning across across a broad range of topics and disciplines um, while dive, diving deep into your interests at a certain point. Um, so Pomona has always kind of, you know, held on to the traditions of that educational model, but also really prides itself on bringing into the fold the spirit of California, right? The spirit of Eureka, I found it. Um, having your Eureka moment, your sense of discovery, um, and the innovation, the forward thinking values, the boundary pushing environment that Southern California really brings into the fold. Um, another great way to kind of think about Pomona, especially in, in, in terms of our values and our philosophies, um, we do tend to kind of look most like a New England uh, based liberal arts college, um, having the broadest range of majors and academic programs, um, and just kind of really retaining that individual identity um, based on that historical context. But um, I'd, I know that's not a very like satisfying answer to be like, we're just like a lot of the New England schools, but with palm trees, right? Because we are a different, a different place than that. Um, and the three adjectives I like to describe that kind of are a distinctive part of Pomona's mission and values are eager, thoughtful, and reverent. Those are two adjectives that are inscribed in our college gates that all of our first year students run through together on their very first day on campus. Um, today or this year virtually, I'm not sure how they were able to accomplish that, but the values of being eager, thoughtful, and reverent transcend a physical, um, ushering into our campus and are something that our students adhere to no matter where they're tuning in from and logging in from in the different corners of the world that they represent. Um, so students at Pomona, they're eager. They're eager to get involved with a residential community. The first students that they usually meet on the, our campus is their sponsor group, which is a group of 15 students that are led by two sophomore mentors who have specifically chosen to sacrifice their sophomore year and living with their peers to be that resource for first year students, right? So um, that kind of culture of mentorship and of paying it forward and having other people be in your corner and be a resource to you and help you navigate your four years at Pomona or help you pick out your study abroad destination or help you find your research or internship opportunity. Having those sophomore mentors in that residential environment in that hallway is a really special way to kind of transition from high school to college. Um, the second is that Pomona students are thoughtful. They are thoughtful with how they want to engage with the curriculum that they have at Pomona with our 48 majors. They're pretty equally spread at Pomona between the arts and, arts and humanities, the natural sciences, the social sciences and interdisciplinary fields. Popular majors in, in some more recent years have included economics, mathematics, computer science, public policy, politics, people going on after they graduate into education and consulting and finance um, and the health professions. We actually just found out today um, that one of our um, famous alums, Jennifer Dunda, class of 1985, um, is actually uh, just won the Nobel Prize in chemistry. So that's a super exciting testament to the strength of a Pomona education and the fact that our our thoughtful students are going out and making positive changes, including revolutionary gene editing tools such as CRISPR that are saving lives, that are introducing medicines to our world that can help make this place a more equitable place and just place. Um, the last adjective that, that I like to describe is reverence. So what that means is that Pomona students have a deep respect and admiration for others. Um, Pomona students really do encompass, as you can see on this slide very briefly, so many different countries, so many different states. 20% um, are first generation to college. They're coming from rural farm towns in Nebraska and big cities such as Chicago and Miami. But 
something that they really do all really adhere to is respecting the differences that people bring to the table. And I'm not saying that at Pomona, it's always sunshine and rainbows and everyone's just getting along and it's some completely harmonious because that's not college. That, that, that's not the reality at any of our institutions. But what they do adhere to is being respectful in terms of listening to difference and knowing that I don't have all the answers. And by being at a community that embraces the different things that people have to contribute and the voices that they bring to the table is something that Pomona does really, really adhere to and does really, really celebrate in terms of our values, our culture. Um, and I do hope that um, wherever you land in college, you end up being eager um, to engage, being thoughtful with how you utilize your gifts and talents for a larger social purpose um, and reverent and respectful to all those that you encounter, whether that's on Pomona's campus or another institution. Um, I do wanna turn things over now to Jessica at Scripps to give you a little window into their distinctive culture and how they fit into the Claremont Colleges. All right, I'll let the PowerPoint catch up. Okay, there we are, yay. Uh, so hi everybody, once again, I'm Jessica Johnston from Scripps. Uh, so I've got a few uh, kind of highlights to share with you tonight. So I'll start off by talking a little bit about our curriculum, which is something that uh, is uh, that only Scripps students do and all Scripps students do. So our signature academic program is called the Core Curriculum in Interdisciplinary Humanities. It's a mouthful, uh, so we just call it core. And CORE is designed to give you a foundation in interdisciplinary thinking through a humanities-based lens. We want you to be able to look at a big topic from lots of academic points of view so that you have a better understanding of that topic as a whole and so you can start to see the relationships between seemingly unrelated academic fields. Uh, so you'll start in your first semester of your first year taking CORE 1. It is by far the biggest class you'll ever take at Scripps because it's taught to the entire first year class all at one time. So you will have lecture once a week with everybody and then discussion sections twice a week and those are significantly smaller, more like uh, 20 students or so, and led by a faculty member. There's always an overarching theme to Core 1. Right now that theme is truth. It rotates every few years. So in the past it's been uh, community, violence, uh, human nature and human difference. So always something really broad. And then each week the lecture will be given by a different professor from a different department. So that's where you're looking at one idea from lots of academic points of view. So you wouldn't necessarily think that somebody from the English department and the psych department and the art department and the math department would be able to find common ground, but they can. It's just that some of them have to be a little more creative than others. Next, you'll move on to core two. So the structure is very different. You'll have a variety of different topics to choose from. And uh, the courses will be significantly smaller, again, around 20 students or so. The one thing that's similar, though, is that all these classes will somehow be interdisciplinary in nature. So, for example, many of them are team taught by two professors from different departments. And then finally, you'll wrap up with core three. So this is uh, the uh, first semester of your sophomore year, if you're keeping track. Uh, and uh, this is similar in structure to core two. You'll have a variety of topics to choose from, but the, um, the class itself is generally project-based. You'll work on some thing, like some kind of independent long-term project. Uh, and that's meant to be sort of like practice for your senior thesis. All students will do the core program. All students will do some kind of a senior thesis, depending on your major. Uh, and those are meant to be the bookends of your experience at Scripps. And uh, so while we have this humanities-based core curriculum, uh, we are, most popular majors are kind of all over the place. You can see on the slide there, uh, biology is always one of our most popular majors. So if you're the kind of student who uh, kind of likes all of your classes, and if you, when somebody says, what's your favorite class? You're like, ooh, um, can I major in everything, please? Uh, you would definitely find your community at Scripps. So I also want to talk a little bit about uh, one of our uh, traditions that we have on campus, and that slide is going to come up pretty soon here. Uh, so you'll be able to see the picture of what I'm talking about. Uh, so it is the graffiti wall. I should have made it my virtual background. I don't know why I didn't. But uh, anyway, so uh, this is my favorite place on campus, and it's my favorite tradition. Uh, so it's a spot on campus where every uh, graduating class gets to have a place on the graffiti wall where they paint some kind of a mural, something that's meant to be representative of of their time at Scripps. And, uh, and so some of them are uh, kind of related to like, things that were happening in the world, like 1970s is about the Vietnam War. Uh, some of them are really inside jokes that are otherwise lost to the sands of time. And some of them are just weird. Uh, so there it is, there's the graffiti wall. Uh, so it's kind of like a time capsule. It's interesting to see where students were at various points in Scripps's history. And then finally, I just want to talk a bit about the fact that we are a women's college. 
That makes us very different from our neighbors who are all co-ed. Uh, we're also quite different from other women's colleges though because of the proximity of the Claremont Colleges Consortium. You can have a very co-ed life if that's what you want or not. It's totally up to you. So I, I'll start off by saying that there are some misconceptions about women's colleges. Let's get those out of the way first. Uh, people think it's going to be like a nunnery. Uh, people think it's going to be like, uh, you know, a bunch of backstabby mean girls, catty drama queens, passive aggressive anarchy and whatnot. Uh, and that's just not the case. What you really see at a women's college is a group of people, students, faculty and staff who have made the intentional choice to join a community that is dedicated to the success and empowerment of women. That's what we do. In a lot of ways, your day-to-day -day experience at a women's college is not going to be dramatically different from any other liberal arts college because we're also a liberal arts college. A lot of those principles are still the same. But we do have a few things, some different priorities uh, that we think about uh, just because we have a different mission as a women's college. So we think about things like uh, faculty teaching style. Are they teaching in a way that's conducive to the way in which women learn? We think about things like implicit bias in the classroom as it relates to gender and how we can combat that in our classrooms. And these things may sound kind of philosophical or intangible, but they can really have a, a direct impact on your classroom experience. Uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about the community at a women's college. I think any of us would say that we have a really tight knit community. It's kind of a liberal arts college cliche. Uh, but I think at a women's college, it's kind of amped up a notch because we have that that commonality of either identifying as women or perhaps identifying with other marginalized identities. Uh, so you feel there's kind of a, a different sort of connection. One thing I really love about women's colleges and at Scripps in particular is that ambition isn't a dirty word, but it's also not about blind ambition and kind of squashing all the little people on your way to the top. It's about always remembering to reach down and bring other uh, people along with you. Uh, and um, I, well, honestly, I could talk about the women's college piece like for hours and I probably have. Uh, so um, I just want to kind of wrap up by saying as a graduate of not Scripps, but another women's college, one of the best things about the experience is not just the four years on campus, but that you get to be a graduate of a women's college for the rest of your life. It really is just the beginning. Uh, and the alum networks that are out there are very powerful in every sense of the word. Uh, so with that, I'll talk to, I'll send it over to a school that knows something about networking uh, with Claremont McKenna. Great, thank you so much, Jessica. So again, my name is Connor Fritz. I'm Associate Dean of Admission at Claremont McKenna College. Uh, Claremont McKenna College was founded in 1946. Uh, we were founded right after, of course, the end of World War II. Um, and in, in a United States that was very different from when they entered, entered World War II. A United States that had hundreds of thousands of men returning from war, a United States that had companies becoming multinational corporations, and a United States that was playing a much greater role in world affairs. And so Claremont McKenna College was created at that time really to speak to the needs at that time, to take, at that time, the men that were coming back from war, to educate them for lives of responsible leadership in business, government, and the professions. And we really do carry on that today, on that mission and that tradition today of preparing our students for what is next in their life, for what world they're going to be graduating into, what economic atmosphere, what political atmosphere, um, and what jobs that are going to be out there as well. And so that is really the focus of CMC, giving our students this very broad, very deep, uh, traditional liberal arts education but balancing it with this very practical and pragmatic approach at the same time. What we call at CMC, learning for the sake of doing. So that starts in the classroom. It starts with our small classes, our eight to one student to faculty ratio. It starts with the way that we really deal um, with learning inside of the classroom. Debate, discussion becomes a very big part. Bringing in outside resources, looking at the world, looking at how what you're learning inside of that classroom applies in the outside world using case studies, bringing in faculty that have knowledge of that outside world as well. And now at CMC, we have 31 different majors, but of course our students can major on the other campuses as well. So we have students in the, in the social sciences, the humanities, the natural sciences, the mathematical sciences, but all really thinking about how the material that they're learning inside of the classroom does apply in the outside world. Now where CMC is placing a lot of our resources, not just our, are not just inside of the classroom, but outside of the classroom as well, through research and internships. Through research, we have 11 research institutes and centers that are housed on our campus. These are all privately funded, revenue generating, they all have their own staff, 
but they all provide opportunities for our students to be paid research, research assistant interns beginning their freshman year. Places like the Lowe Institute for Political Economy, the Rose Institute for State and Local Government, the Keck Center for International Strategic Relations, the McGrubian Center for Human Rights, the Finance Economics Institute, all a part of these. The institutes and centers also provide a lot of funding for our students, um, funding to do their own research, to present papers at conferences, even to start international nonprofit organizations. Research is a big part of life at all liberal arts colleges. Um, and at CMC, over 79% of our students do research on faculty-led research. The second part to the practical and pragmatic at, uh, um, at CMC, of course, are internships. Internships are a huge part of life here. There is an emphasis on this campus that over your summer, you will be doing something that is either developing yourself personally or professionally. So some ways in which we facilitate this, we have the sponsored internship and experience program. For students who have taken on either unpaid or underpaid internships during their summer, they can actually request funding to take those on. So last summer, we gave over $1.7 million to our students who are doing either unpaid or underpaid internships. Uh, that will pay for costs of flights if you're going around the world or around the country, living expenses, eating, um, spending money. Uh, really, we try and cover it all. Other ways in which we help is by using our really extensive alumni and parent network um, for, for networking for our students. CMC, more than any other place that I've ever been to, really does go deep into our network in order to find opportunities and help connect our students to opportunities for their internships and full-time jobs uh, after college. Um, if we go to the next slide, sorry. Uh, it's okay. Um, so also at CMC, um, we have the Athenaeum, again, which is connecting our students to the outside world. So the Athenaeum is a building on our campus. It's also what we call our speaker series. So every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night of the academic year, and typically on Friday for lunch, we bring a speaker to campus. The only stipulation for that speaker is that they must be a leader in their field. Students can sign up for any and all speakers as they want to go see. Um, they can sign up two weeks in advance and they're signing up for um, a reception, a sit down dinner, the food is really good, um, the speaker and a question and answer period. It's very student centered. So the first seven speakers, the first seven students that sign up in the morning sit at the head table with the speaker, no faculty, staff or administration ever do. Last year we had um, uh, Tom, uh, Tom Brennan, former director of the CIA come and speak at CMC. Uh, we had Samantha Powers, the former UN uh, ambassador uh, under Obama, come and speak at CMC. Tara Westover, the author of Educated, all were here last year. And then we talk about student life. So stu CMC students are incredibly engaged because they see their student life, they see their student organizations, the things that they're involved in outside of the classroom also have ways to develop it themselves, um, both personally and professionally. So while we share about 250 clubs and organizations with the other colleges, we have about 30 to 40 clubs and orgs that are specifically for CMC. And these are your very CMC style of things. So we have a very strong debate team and mock trial team. Our model United Nations organization last year um, was the only liberal arts college ranked in the top 25. Uh, in fact, they were ranked number four. Three out of the last four years, they've been world champions at the Harvard World and UN Conference. Uh, we have the Student Investment Club, which invests about two and a half million dollars of our endowment. Uh, and then we also have an uh, organization called Source, which is a student-run, student-led consulting company um, that students get paid and they go out and they consult with local and international nonprofit organizations on their business practices. So that's what I'm going to say a little bit about CMC. Uh, and now I'm going to pass it over to back to Tira. Thank you, Connor. Um, so hopefully by now what you're figured out is that as each of us was added to the Claremont Colleges, there was a reason and a need for each. And the reason and the need for Harvey Mudd was for a high level math science engineering education. We were founded in 1955, two years before the launch of Sputnik. And the idea was that there was a strong demand for this kind of high level math science and engineering, but in the context of a liberal arts education. And so that really is the heart of who we are. We're known as the liberal arts college of math science and engineering. Everything that matters to us you can, be, can be found in our mission statement. And the mission statement of Harvey Mudd says that we seek to educate mathematicians, scientists, and engineers well-versed in those areas who are also well-versed in the humanities, social sciences, and the arts, 
who are prepared to assume leadership roles in their fields, and who recognize the, uh, the impact of their work on society. So everything you need to know about Harvey Mudd is in that sense. The corollary to that, which I'll be honest, I actually prefer, is technology divorced from humanity is worse than no technology at all. So it is all about those two pieces. Um, and as you see here, we are the smallest of the Claremont Colleges. We're actually now about 900 undergraduate students. Um, and we have a curriculum that has three different parts. The first part is a core curriculum. The second is the humanities, social sciences, and the arts. And the third is your major. Um, and the core is a key part of who we are. Students study in every single department we offer before they declare their major at the end of their sophomore year. So unlike many other technical institutions, you don't have to know what you want to study coming in. You just have to be pretty sure that it's something in the STEM fields. Um, but humanities, social sciences, and arts is a crucial part. And that's actually who we are looking for in our admission process. Students who are as excited about their work in, the, in what we call HSA, Humanities, Social Sciences, and Arts, as they are uh, their work in the STEM fields. Um, and so as you see here, about 30% will be in the in HSA. And essentially what that means is every single student will declare a concentration, something just short of a minor in HSA. The most popular one tends to be economics or students like numbers, but you could do history, dance, theater, language, whatever you want. And on average, half those courses will be in uh, at Harvey Mudd. The other half will be at some combination of the other Claremont colleges. Um, we only offer 10 majors at Harvey Mudd and they are all in math, science, and engineering. And that makes us very different from just about every other liberal arts college in the country. Um, one major I wanna call out is engineering just because it is done very differently at Harvey Mudd. You don't major in uh, civil engineering or mechanical engineering, you major in engineering. And we do that very specifically because that way when students graduate from Harvey Mudd, they're not pigeonholed into only one specific area, but they can use their electives to focus in on something very specific within the field. Um, research, as you see here, is key. This is where it matters that we are entirely undergraduate. You're never taught by a graduate student. Um, we don't have them. But in addition to that, every single student will have huge research opportunities. And I know often there's a skepticism about how can a small liberal arts college offer the same kind of research opportunities you might find at a larger research university. But all of our faculty are still doing research in their fields. And if they were at a larger institution, they would be turning to their graduate students to support them. Instead, at Harvey Mudd, they turn to their undergrads. So students will be doing research as part of their courses. We have 200 students on campus every summer doing fully funded research, working with faculty members. And then every single student will take part uh, in a capstone project in their senior year. Students majoring in biology, chemistry, pure math, pure physics will be doing a senior thesis. Students in the more applied fields of computer science and engineering will take part in something we have called the clinic program. And that's where companies like Google, Microsoft, Disney, SpaceX, Livermore National Lab, City of Hope Hospital, they pay Harvey Mudd each year to have our students in groups of four or five take on real life research problems for them. Uh, eight to 10 patents come out of these projects every year. Our students' names are on the patents um, and uh, the company retains intellectual property, but it's an amazing opportunity for our students to do this very high level work. But again, always with this context of understanding the impact of their work on society. Um, and so partly this is why our students um, actually have amazing outcomes when they graduate from Harvey Mudd. Um, Harvey Mudd students are typically have among the highest average mid-career salaries of graduates of any college or university in the country. Our alums also, um, we have typically among the highest percentage of students from liberal arts colleges going on to get their PhDs. Uh, we typically show up at the top or near the top of the uh, return on investment. Um, and part of the reason we think our students do so well in all of this is certainly because they're graduating in math, science, and engineering. Let's be honest, that's not surprising. Um, you also see a pretty astonishing average starting salary for our students there. Part of the reason, yes, they are graduating in math, science, and engineering. That is a key part. But the other reason we believe our students do so well after they leave Harvey Mudd is that they graduate with a set of skills that even distinguish them from other high-level math, science, engineering students. They know how to write. They know how to work across disciplines. They know how to communicate. Um, and they know how to collaborate. Everything at Harvey Mudd is in collaboration over competition. A lot of STEM institutions sort of pride themselves on having a cutthroat competition atmosphere. At Harvey Mudd, everything is about collaboration. It's not a what you get, what you get kind of atmosphere. Students care deeply about their own success, but um, in many cases, even more so about the success of their classmates. We've been described as the STEM version of leave no one behind. So often our alums are, are um, known as the translators in their office or in their graduate programs. They can do the the very high level conversations in the, in the scientific world that you would expect, but they can also translate the work they're doing for someone who may not have that same background. And to be honest, you can be as brilliant as you want, but if you can't talk about it, it doesn't matter. 
Um, and what I want to highlight as I finish about the student experience is really that there are a few key things that stand out. We are very residential, like all of us are among the Claremont Colleges, 98% uh, residential with nine different dorms on campus. Um, we have that community of collaboration. We are known certainly for the rigor of our curriculum, but it is also very much housed in the community of support and not just uh, in sort of students watching out for, for themselves. And we are also one of a handful of colleges to have a student run honor code, which means that most of our exams are unproctored. Students will be given uh, an exam and told what resources to use, how long they have to take it, um, and they could literally all be sitting next to each other taking the same exam on the lawn, or they could be taking all different exams. An incredible sense of community, trust, um, and students take that very seriously. So if you're a student who is very excited about work in the STEM fields, but you don't want to give up all of the other things you're excited about outside of that, and you want to work in a small, highly collaborative environment, I certainly hope that you'll consider Harvey Mudd. And with that, I will turn it over to Erin and Pittsburgh College. Awesome. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for being here and thanks for sticking with us. I will wrap it up for our individual college overviews. Pitzer College is the youngest of the undergraduate Claremont Colleges, founded in 1963. Very much like all of my colleagues describing their individual institutions being sort of a product of our time. Pitzer, founded in the 1960s, right after the March on Washington, civil rights movement, um, Vietnam War protests, university protests across the country. I think we very much have that spirit of activism, social responsibility, sort of this overall dedication to social justice, to sort of bettering our community as a whole. We are heavy on the social sciences and the humanities at Pitzer. Some of our most popular majors on campus tend to be political studies, environmental analysis, sociology, psychology, media studies, economics, human bio. This will change every year, but that's a little sampling. We have almost 1,100 students on campus, about 40 different majors to choose from, and about 20 different minors. At Pitzer, alongside our mission, being a very mission-driven institution, we have five core values that really distinguish our approach to education. This will be what distinguishes us from the other Claremonts for sure, but also colleges across the country. So I'll share a little bit more about Pitzer kind of through the lens of each of those values. First and foremost is interdisciplinary learning, very much at the heart of any liberal arts college experience, taking a lot of different classes and finding connections between various academic disciplines. At Pitzer, we very much take that to the next level. We don't have academic departments on campus, but faculty are rather kind of organized into field groups. So we sort of break down the barriers between academic disciplines and pave way to a lot of co-taught classes. Faculty members coming together to co-teach a topic of their choice. Some of our favorites, the surfboard as art and culture, the political economy of world soccer, lots of options. Students have the chance to, yes, double major on campus, about a quarter of our students will, but also combine programs, self-design programs, explore a variety of academic fields that they might have never tried before. Self-designing majors is definitely a special program at Pitzer. About 5% of our students choose to design their own major during their time on campus. We also don't have core curriculum classes on campus, but our graduation requirements are rather distributed into sort of distribution style requirements. So taking classes in the social sciences, the humanities, some sort of social justice theory praxis course pairing. We have a lot of flexibility deciding which classes are right for you. Another one of our core values on campus is intercultural understanding. When we talk about this, we often love to reference studying abroad. Study abroad is very popular for Pitzer students, and we have about 60 different programs offered each year. About eight of those are actually Pitzer specific, Pitzer direct run programs. About just over half of our students will choose to go abroad at some point, and you can actually go up to three separate times. So the equivalent of two semesters and one summer program during your time on campus. Apart from that, a piece of study abroad that is my favorite in terms of how Pitzer approaches the program is that a month long component of your time abroad, of your semester abroad, will actually be a community engagement or internship component. Every program has a homestay, everything is language and culturally intensive, so making sure that you're really focusing in that immersive experience while you are studying away. Perhaps one of the most visible core values on our campus um, that all of our students, faculty, and staff will engage with easily while they're at Pitzer is environmental sustainability. Sustainability and a commitment to environmentalism is very much at our core and very much visible in our landscaping. About 75% of Pitzer's campus is actually going to be landscaped with all drought tolerant native to Southern California plants and species. This definitely makes us look a little bit different than some of our peers, both at the Claremonts and like I've mentioned many times across the country. Um, but it's something that we take a lot of pride in. About 90% of our students actually live in sustainable housing, thanks to about 60% of our buildings being LEED certified on campus, that leadership in energy and environmental design. 
Um, and we were the first college on the West Coast to divest from fossil fuels in 2014. So divesting our endowment from the fossil fuel and coal industries. And out of that accomplishment was founded the Robert Redford Conservancy for Southern California Sustainability. This is a net zero certified facility at Pitzer that is an integrated research and learning space for students, faculty, staff to engage with issues surrounding climate change and sustainability right here in Southern California. It's a great way to get involved in community outreach, educational opportunities, and film screenings, fellowship programs, partnerships with local environmental community organizations, and much more. Students definitely take environmentalism to the next level as well, not using dryers on campus, but opting for clotheslines outside the residence halls instead, banning plastic water bottles and plastic straws, farm to table philosophy in the dining hall, all of the above. Student engagement is another one of our core values on campus. And I like to mention this just in terms of activism and how active our student body truly is. Pretty consistently on ranking lists, you'll see Pitzer pop up as the number one most politically active student body in the country, most active student government, largest student senate per capita of any liberal arts college. And really that rings true. These are rankings that are very true to our identity and how active our students are. We have a shared governance model at Pitzer, which means that students, faculty, and staff all have equal say in major decision making that happens across campus. So what this means is that students sit on every executive committee that we have here at Pitzer. So when we are deciding on new faculty members that we're hiring, when we are deciding which professors receive tenure, when we're bringing in a new president for the college, when we are bringing in, you know, muralists to paint the new mural on one of our residence halls, students are going to be sitting on all of these committees making major decisions alongside our administrators. It's a great way to stay involved with some of the kind of bigger decision making across the college, student senate, another very popular way to do so. Last but not least is social responsibility. So our fifth core value on campus. I like to say that social justice and really a commitment to social responsibility, awareness, social justice as a whole is kind of the common thread that will tie together all of Pitzer's programs and really sort of identifies our ethos as a community. As an entire community of students, faculty and staff, we donate over 100,000 service hours every year. Most of that is thanks to community partnerships that are actually housed through the Community Engagement Center or the CEC on campus. And students actually recently petitioned to change our service requirement from 45 service hours over the course of a semester to a social justice theory and social responsibility praxis course pairing. So now to graduate from Pitzer, you will take a class. You likely will take more than one, but you are required to take at least one that takes an issue of social justice, agricultural economics, Latinx community health, whatever it may be that you choose to study. Looking at that in the classroom, discussing the social justice issues and theory behind it, and then going out to partner with a community organization to actually do that work. A really popular option for this in recent years has been to take an inside out class. This is part of our justice education initiative across the Claremont Colleges. So we have classes that are about half Pitzer and Claremont College students, half inmates that are taught inside local prisons. I like to end with this for a couple reasons. I think Pitzer is always innovating, always sort of changing the way that we approach education, social justice, making sure that our conversations are not just happening sort of on our campus, in our bubble at Pitzer, but happening in the community alongside grassroots activism and advocacy projects. Our inside out classes are a great way to sort of spin our thoughts about education a little bit, dive into mass incarceration, learning a bit more about the school to prison pipeline and how our faculty members are working to reverse that. Um, and also, all of these classes are happening virtually this fall, able to get that partnership going for our classes and our inside students in the prisons, something that has been very heartening and fun to see. I'm going to leave it there. So I will pass it off to Tom to go over a couple more details just about shared admission policies, and then we will do a little Q&A. All righty. Thanks, Erin. And for the sake of time, I'm, I'm going to be really brief with this slide. So essentially, Hopefully the core of what you learned from the session today is that we are more alike than we are different and we have lots of shared appreciation for liberal arts curriculums, learning across difference, being collaborative, right? That is the core of what the Claremont Colleges is all about. However, we are all distinctive colleges at the end of the day. And a lot of where you see that coming uh, most explicitly is through our different admissions and financial aid policies and processes. So this slide just gives you a sample of some of the different nuts and bolts of each of our different campuses. Um, we definitely know that there was so many questions that came in about admissions and testing and kind of how each of our campuses evaluate these different forms of what a student brings together. We all operate a holistic 
basic review application process, right, as you see in that kind of shared policies top corner. But it's best, especially during these individual breakout sessions that we will be um, heading into shortly, to ask the specific Claremont colleges that you're interested some of the more of these specific questions about admissions. Because again, each of us are going to have nuanced different answers about how those logistics and pragmatics go when it comes to our admissions processes. And it's best not to just assume that we all have the same policies or blanket ways of approaching certain pieces of information or what have you, when the reality is that we are crafting different communities that have lots of similarities, but at the end of the day, we all are individual institutions that have um, these separate and unique processes. Um, so with that, um, I do want to maybe just pose one question to the group before um, I believe Aaron or Natalia were, were planning on dropping the web link to the breakout room little sheet um, that students can break into. Um, but the one question that I kind of wanted to pose to folks is we got a lot of questions actually about study abroad. Um, so if maybe someone could briefly talk about um, and kind of uh, clarify that each of our campuses have programs that are available to students. If anyone is able to snag that question and speak to it for a second, I think that would be a great way to close things off based on the interest. So we all run pretty much like you're gonna find most other campuses run, right? We partner with institutions and programs abroad um, across the world. And we have, so we have to uh, evaluate those institutions and programs and make sure that their academics are at our standard. I think Pitcher is the only one here that has their own um, study abroad programs. So Erin, do you want to quickly touch on that? Absolutely. So we do partner with a lot of other universities. I know I saw a question about like, can you do programs at the other colleges? And the short answer is yes. Like sometimes they'll be restricted to each campus, but Pitzer, we have eight direct run programs that are for Pitzer students, but CMC students, Scripps students, Swarthmore students, Sarah Lawrence students have come on those programs. So keeping that in mind that it is very broad, um, just like we would partner with a program that's run through BARD or, you know, another college in the States, a lot of this is collaborative. Our direct run programs really just mean like Pitzer specific faculty, staff, research facilities in these other countries hosting these programs. Awesome opportunities for sure, but there's so many different opportunities out there. So yes, like Connor said, every college will have some sort of study abroad. We all have kind of different focuses, different specialties and programs, but there's many, many opportunities, which is another one of those great benefits of the consortium. I think just probably one brief last question, um, more of like a, I believe I'm on the same page with everyone. Um, there were a couple of questions about testing and how with the COVID-19 pandemic, whether or not our campuses are requiring testing this year. I know Pitzer has been test, test optional for a very long time, so kudos to them for having that. Um, but maybe just a nod from all of my panelists that I see on the screen that all of our campuses are test optional for all first year applicants this year, or anyone who's applying for the fall of 2021 entry term. Yes. So transfer students as well as first year students, um, that policy does apply to all of you this year. Um, so do know that, you know, our colleges are mindful of the curveballs that have thrown all of your way and the unique experiences that you've had to navigate because of this public health crisis. And we're not expecting flawless, seamless, you know, uh, seamless transcript, or, you know, you had to have found a way to keep your dance recital going, even though it was canceled, like find some woodland creatures to do it, right? Like we're not expecting you to kind of come up with this, you know, warped review of reality. And we know that kind of like what your life has, has really had to pivot to is something that we're human in admissions. You know, we, we make tech mistakes. Like we don't have, we have PowerPoints that don't move from slide to slide when we want them to, right? Um, and we don't expect that sense of perfection for anyone who's coming to the Claremont Colleges at all. We're all human at the end of the day. And um, again, we're more alike than we are different, which is something that colleges really celebrate, but we also really value the difference that you bring to the spaces that you are going to um, be sent off to and um, find your communities in. So with that, I do want to pay um, uh, heed to the uh, uh, link, which will be shared in the chat very shortly. Um, and Aaron, if you want to turn it to our final slide with our instructions. Um, so as you can see from Yanelli, um, thank you Yanelli for sending this along. You should be able to see a Pitzer based web link. If you click on that link on your browser, there should be different Zoom links to all of our respective individual college breakout rooms. You're welcome to bounce between rooms and ask specific questions of our admissions officers, um, particularly those ones where if you're wondering like how's psychology at Scripps, right? Like you can ask Jessica, right? Um, and if you want to go ask any of the rest of us what that's like, um, you have the opportunity to do so from about 
uh, now once when we log out of this main Zoom into our respective individual rooms. So we do hope that this provided you with a great comprehensive overview of the Claremont Colleges. Again, we all have great virtual visit opportunities on our respective websites. We encourage you to check those out if you would like to explore any of our, our colleges more deeply. Um, but definitely utilize this breakout session now to ask those specific questions. Um, and we are so, so glad that you were able to um, tune into this session today, evening, wherever again, as you may be coming from, um, and wish you the best of luck with your college search process. Thank you so much for your time.